Check, check. Yeah. What up, players? Welcome to episode 50 of the Player One Podcast. I am your host, Tyrone Jr., a.k.a. Hollywood Champa. If this is your first time tuning in, what up, player? If you've been here before and you decided to return, welcome back, player. I appreciate you all. This is a special episode. Episode 50. Yeah. Episode 50? I never imagined getting this far with the podcast over two years ago when I started the podcast I didn't think this far ahead I have goals I plan to reach those goals with this podcast but just episode 50 was not really anything that crossed my mind when I got to episode 46 47 someone hit me up and was like hey episode 50 what you gonna do for that I said hey we're not there yet I got to do episode 47, 48, 49, but now we're here, episode 50. I think I think what I have for you guys for this episode is very appropriate. It, it fits. Like, I couldn't just come to y'all with no weak content for episode 50, you know? Episode 49, I spoke about my experience at the Drew League with LeBron James. I was there when LeBron was there. I have my sources. They said LeBron's going to be there. I said, so am I. It's cool that he's going to be there. I'm going to be there too. So I went there, and he was there, and I got to watch him play. And I spoke on all of that in episode 49. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It is actually my most viewed episode on YouTube. Shout out to everyone who's tuned in. Shout out to everyone who made a comment. Hey, comments are huge. If y'all could interact a bit more... You guys support, you guys watch the content, but I need more interactions. Uh, If I post on Twitter, retweets and favorites, those are great. It's the interactions that people are looking for. The bigger folks want to see the interactions. If this were to get picked up at some point, it would be because of the interactions. Okay, so do me a favor. I'm putting my time and effort in this stuff. All you have to do is push a couple buttons. Maybe push a couple buttons for me. That's all I'm asking. Oh, to go along with that, actually, I have some merch. It's overseas right now. It's been made. I got pictures. It's being sent. The whole shipping process is happening as we speak. I will be shipping out some Player One Podcast coffee mugs to some of my more consistent listeners and then I will give some to some of the new listeners. So if you're new and you're just tuning in, this is your first episode or so, please drop a comment on the YouTube or respond on the Twitter or Instagram. Comment on the Instagram page. Uh, we I have social medias for all of this. So just show your face and I might send a coffee mug your way. Whether you drink coffee or not. It looks cool. You can put it up somewhere. I'm telling you, these look cool. The colors are pretty cool. But man, episode 50, this is awesome. I'm going to keep things short and sweet. If you're coming off of 49, look, 49 was different. I spent like at least 45 minutes on the episode. I will not be doing that this episode. I have the music queued up to start playing at 17 minutes. I don't want this episode to break 20 minutes. Only way it breaks 20 minutes is if I'm talking on my clothes up, okay? So just stick with me. Let's ride. Alright, so for all these episodes, I have a frame. I have some a framework for, uh, what do you want to call it? A schedule on how this is going to go. I have three segments. First segment is the roundup. I bring us together, what's been going on. I give you updates. Second segment, would you rather... I give you a question. Would you rather do this or that? I want your response in the comments or DMs or text. However, just reach out. Let's let's talk about it. And then the third segment is story time. And this story time is going to be like, as you see the background, I have it set up. I'm at the Clippers facility. It's obvious. I work for the Clippers. That's not obvious. If you didn't know, now you know. I work for the LA Clippers, so I was there for media day. 
And if you are on YouTube, you can see I have a couple pictures posted where I'm interacting and I'm helping the player sign merch. That's going to be for story time. Saving the best for last. All right. The roundup. Uh, so pretty much, I just wanted to shout out episode 49. It was the biggest episode yet. Most views on YouTube. Uh, most interactions, reactions, all of that. It, I've got a lot of response from that. I love it. I appreciate it. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, also, the Run Club. We are on the Nike Run app. If you are a runner or a walker, if you have a dog or something that you like to walk and you want to record your distance, hit me up. I can send you the link. Every month, I post two different challenges. One is for the walkers and one is for the runners. And you just try to reach a goal. It's pretty much a daily goal of one mile or a two miles for the runners. Whatever. If, you, if you're interested, hit me up. We can set that up. Uh, running has done a lot. I love running. Well, I don't love it. But when it comes to working out, running is a really good workout. And it takes the least amount to prep for and such. I don't have to drive to the gym. I can just go outside and run. I love it for that. That's going to be it for the roundup. I don't really have much more to say. I mean, we on episode 50. What's bigger than that? What's better than that? We had 49. 49 was awesome, but we are doing bigger and better things right here, right now. Episode 50. Like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't done any of that stuff, please do so. I appreciate it. I would appreciate it big time. Would you rather? It's simple. Simple segment. It's where I ask you, would you rather do this? Would you rather do that? Red pill, blue pill. Would you go left, right? Yes, no. Yada, yada. I'm going to give you my answer. And what I want you to do is to comment your answer and your reasoning why. Why would you do this? Why would you do that? Would you rather work out in the morning or in the evening? It's simple. I ask this because for my run club, most of us runners... Well, we're on the opposite side of the country. So for me, my preference is to run in the morning. I have this thing. I don't know what it is. It's a mental block where if I'm not doing my workout in the morning, I'm probably not doing it at all. So let me know. Would you rather work out in the morning or in the evening? Simple. That's that. See how quick that was? We're not even eight minutes in. I have over 10 minutes to tell you guys about my experience for the LA Clippers media day. I got to chat with players, some of your favorite players. Are you serious right now? Okay. We in the streets, man. LA, LA don't play. I don't know if y'all can hear the sirens. Always something, man. Always something going on outside. Thankfully, I'm nice and cozy in this LA Clippers facility. It's nice in here. It's nice. Anyways, let's get this going, man. So, Clippers Media Day. Uh, okay. I work for the LA Clippers. I work in the community relations department. So, pretty much, we're trying to connect the team with the LA community. So, we do things, we uh, run events outside of game day. We're just mingling with the community, trying to bring fans, trying to bring people into supporting the Clippers as the Clippers support the community. It's awesome what they do for the community. Uh, I will throw out here that all the outside basketball courts have been renovated and what the Clippers did to kind of let it be known is they left their logo up on the backboards all across the community. So when I first moved to L.A. six and a half years ago, I went outside to go shoot around, get to know the neighborhood, and it was a Clippers like sticker on the backboard. And I was like, what the hell I got Clippers up here for? I need to put Lakers up there at the time. And I was Lakers. They need to put Lakers. I go to the next basketball court. I'm trying to learn the area, so I like to go to different courts. I'll be driving. I find a new court. I hit the homie up. Yo, I found a new court over here. Let's go check it out. So we go play pickup at the next court. At that court, the 
the backboard had the Clippers logo. I'm like, wait a second. These fools are everywhere. The third court we find, Clippers logo. So then I do a little research. I find out the Clippers done redone most of the, the courts in all the communities. I said, wow, this is awesome. And then I got hired a few years later for the Clippers. This will be my second season with the team. And then I really started to see, being on the inside, I've started to see what is going on. The money is being sent here, there, the schools, uh, the rec centers. All the rec centers have been redone. The indoor courts got L.A. Clipper logos on the walls. They have uh, L.A. Clipper Junior League basketball leagues. So the teams are running around with Clipper jerseys. And then it's like reversible. So every game is going to be, it's like the Clippers versus Clippers. You got the black jerseys versus the white jerseys. It's the coolest thing I've seen. I didn't know there was such a thing, honestly. Being from Virginia, uh, we have the Wizards in D.C. There, we were lucky if we had a court that was still standing outside, an outdoor court. So to come from all of that to get to L.A. and then see that the Clippers are doing what they're doing as they're building their new arena that opens in two more seasons. I think the start of 2024 the season of 2024 is when the Clippers will be moved into their new arena. But till then, these guys are, we're, well, us, are putting together events. We're doing what we can for the community. And in return, you're starting to see a, a crazy Clipper fan base out here. Um, and you really don't see much from the other team. I ain't even going to say their name, man. It's, it's I support L.A. basketball, I'm going to say that. I support L.A. basketball, but when it comes to the community, the Clippers are the front runners. It is cool what they do. And, I mean, I'm also on the inside now, so I see it a bit more. But it just seems as if these guys are doing it all while the other guys ain't. You did. All right, so look, man, I got to meet. A bunch of players if you see in these pictures I'm I'm helping out we had to set up so pretty much media days when the team comes together they show their faces uh, they have to talk with the media do interviews they take team pictures, not team pictures but individual pictures this is where when you go to the games and they play like these little mini videos of these players when they do the introductions and such they're doing all that stuff right here at media day so this facility as you can see in the in my background was covered up they had studio set out they had lights and cameras over here cameras over there a stage where the players were doing their interviews with the media taking questions and the coach I got to speak to coach Ty Lu for a little bit we were talking about hair uh, he was saying how he just well he's talking with me and Paul George Ty Lu, me Paul George Paul George is signing the hats I'm helping him with the hats and stuff Ty Lue, uh, Paul George was like, yo, coach, come sign some hats. He was like, no, I don't, I don't sign no hats. Like, that's for y'all. I'm behind the scenes. I stayed behind the scenes. But he was like, man, when would you cut your hair? Like, it looks good. There was another player. I forgot who was with us. Uh, man, the interactions is all day. I'm telling you, like, players left and right. I'm, I have friends on the team now. I'm going to say that. And they don't know my name. Or they ain't going to remember it, but they'll know my face. I do know that. It was on some like, yo, we've been around each other. This was like a almost an eight-hour event. So I think we – did we go past eight? No, nah, it wasn't eight. It was close to eight, man. It was a long day in this facility. So we were with the players as they're signing all these things. We've had conversations to where now they could recognize who I am from here on. I'm excited about that. I can't wait for the season just for that part alone. Um but I, all I want to do really is just tell you guys my favorite interactions. I have a whole list of names and like I have a story for everybody. But for the time that's left, I, I'm only going to tell you how about this. I'll give you guys my top three. I'll give you guys three different quick stories. Uh... Okay, I'm going to go with the two pictures right here. So, 
We got Nicholas Batum. He was signing hats. They first had to sign all these different basketballs. The basketballs take up space, so they're laid out along the wall, and they're wrapped around. So they he was going down. Every player had to do this. So it, it was up to the players. When they came out from the locker room, you got to go take pictures from these stations. You got to go answer questions, and then you got to sign stuff. So it was a matter. It was up to the players what they wanted to do first, what they wanted to do last. Batum went and did everything else first. And as you see in the picture, he has his hoodie on. He went back to the locker room, changed, then came out to sign. I will say, Batum, he was the least happy about the whole thing. I don't, I don't like this time. This can I pause this? I'm gonna pause this if that works. Okay. After I said I was gonna do only but so much, uh, 17 minutes and such. I ain't gonna have time for that. I need more time. I need more time. It's, it's gotta happen. This is happening live. This is on the fly. I'm not gonna have outro music. I wanna be able to tell you guys everything, like how it went down. Let's see. Continue? Is it? Hell yeah. Let's go. I also have an audio. I'm recording via audio, so I can post this. If you like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts. This will be available for those as well. Uh, YouTube is like the newer platform that I've been posting on. So things are okay. Cool, cool, cool. So Batoon, back to Batoon. Um. Oh yes, the players actually. You have to decide what you want to do. You come out of the locker room. You can either sign things or you can go deal with the media and such. Batum did everything first, everything else, and last was to come sign. I was working with the hats. I was over at the hat station, me and a couple other coworkers. And pretty much these hats, we don't it don't take up a lot of space as you can see in the picture cuz they all fold up together. They you can stack them. Compared to the basketballs, they wrap around the wall. They take up space physically. So these folks have to cover ground. They're sliding along the wall as they sign basketballs. But when it comes to the hats, you come to me, I got these stacks, and you got to sign these. I'm going to help you. I'm going, you know, we're going to get a little rhythm going. You're going to sign. I pull the hat away. You sign the next one. I pull the hat away. You sign the next. I pull the hat away, and it just goes and goes and goes. I wasn't going to speak much. Depending, I would wait on the energy. I'd catch the vibe and see if they were willing to speak or not. Some players had way more energy. Some players are way talkative. The others were just like Nick Batum. That's my guy. We we got along, but he was not happy with the amount of hats that he had to sign. Because he, he went the route. There was different routes you could go about. It. You could sign the basketballs. You could sign the pictures, then the hats. A lot of folks would do that route. Because the basketballs were the first thing they see. So they go sign those and wrap around do the pictures, then finish at the hats. This man probably took the worst route where you do the basketballs, then the hats. The hats were the longest. It took the longest amount of time. It would take people, I'd say at least, at least 10 minutes to finish all the hats. So each of the players that I interacted with, I was standing with them, maybe chatting with them up to 10 minutes. Could have been longer. It, it was a while. Um, but Nick Batum was chatting with him. He was just huffing and puffing. I told him, though. I told him, I was like, hey, man, like, everybody else had a lot of energy. I understand where you are with this whole thing. And then I had to ask him, I said, what year is this for you? He said, 15. I said, man, congrats on that. He was like, yeah, like, I'm tired of doing this. So I told him, I was like, hey, man, this is a, it's a one, one and done type of situation. And he was like, yeah, at least that's a good thing. But he was like, sometimes when playoff teams, when, when they make the playoffs, they have to sign a second batch of things. I said, dang, I could see a second batch coming. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. And so we just we went on. I was like, I could tell he's not really trying to chat much, so I'm going to help you. Let's do this. Let's do this. And uh, so that was that. It was cool. I get the hats from him. Um, there's a rookie on the team, Musa Diab. 
Diabate, I think I'm saying his name right, Diabate. Uh, he's from France, along with Nicholas Batum. So I told him, I said, hey, man, that rookie, he has a lot of energy. He spent a lot of time with us. He's, like, dancing, the music going on. He's signing the hats, signing the hats the wrong colors. We got two different markers. If you got certain hats, get certain colors. And this man just, he's all over. He had the most energy. He was fun, though. I, I appreciated his presence. But he's also from France. So Nick Batum made a comment on that. And he was like, man, yeah, they sent me this rookie from France. They think we supposed to get along because he's from France. He said he got all the energy. I'm like, man, this is year 15. So it was funny to kind of hear his perspective on the whole thing. 15 years of going around signing this stuff, even though it's once a year, it's a lot of signatures. We did not get a total count on the hats. Me and the coworkers were like, we should just count these and kind of get an idea. But I do know one stack of, I think, maybe like eight stacks. So like 27 hats. And they kind of got mixed around. So we guesstimated it was over 200 hats. So just the hats alone, outside of the basketballs, outside of the pictures. They had pictures, and then some pictures were stacked up. So all of that was going on, so I could feel for the players, man. And when he was over here doing the hat, he just kept saying, year 15. And I said, hey, we just going to get through these, man. And that was a cool experience because everybody else, I would say, was on the brighter side of things when it comes to energy. But Toon is a cool guy, though. We had some conversation. Like, when he would talk with you, <coughs> excuse me, he made great eye contact. Like, it was, it felt like he was really talking with me. So, it was cool. It felt like he was really listening and such. So, that was really dope. I really appreciated that. It was just a cool perspective. A veteran, year 15. It only makes me wonder, because LeBron's on year 20. So, I wonder, like, how he was going about things. But Paul George... I'm going to speak on Paul George. I posted a clip um, on Instagram. Paul George is right there with us. Paul George is interacting with us. He was really cool about the whole thing. He just, it was another day to him. He knew I had to do these, but he was not huffing and puffing. Nick, I'm sorry, Nick. I, if you ever somehow see this or anything, hey, I told you. I said it to you, too. I told you it was funny to hear you huff and puff compared to the other players. So I'm just speaking on it, man. I don't want no trouble. But yeah, Nick, he was <sighs> more, huh, I can't believe this. Huh. He's like me. I like to complain. I was telling my coworkers this. We was on our lunch break, and I was just complaining. And I said, man, I've been standing up all day. I want to sit down. My knees hurt. But that's just me. I I'll complain. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it done. Just like Nicholas Batum. He was complaining, but he was getting it done. But you're going to hear me. You're going to hear something from me. So that was going on. But then Paul George comes along. He's signing autographs. The co-workers or managers and such, they, they all know Paul. They talk to him a bit more. So he they're familiar with each other. So they're talking about his shoes. So what are these new shoes like? He's saying, oh, the, the Paul George 6s have a wider base than the 5s. They're lighter or whatever. I didn't hear in detail. I wasn't like all in their conversation because I don't have a pair myself. I, even though I've thought about getting them, I almost pulled the trigger a few times, but I haven't gotten a pair yet. But they were talking on that sort, so I let him be. But Paul, he came by. Uh, he said, what's up? And I was like, he talking to me? Like, damn, you Paul George, but you said, what's up? Dude? That's tight. What's up, man? So, like, it was cool to interact with him. Um, but I have my other favorite experiences and i say Amir Coffee. He's cool, man. He's very cool. Uh, and then there's one more. I'm, I'm so bad. I don't know his first name. Last name Williamson. Number 12. He's a new face to me. I didn't know. I didn't know who he was. I tried to look him up on on the Yahoo Sports app, but they didn't have the Clippers full roster. It was like, I guess, the names we know from last season. So I didn't know who he was, and I didn't wasn't going to do more research. I was just like, all right, let me just get through and help him out. But that dude, number 12, that's my dog. We had a conversation. Like, he took his time. He was not happy about it, but he was getting through it, and he was talking with me and the other employees, and... He was just saying, like, yeah, like, I'm not one of the big players, so I don't have to do... Because, okay, 
I'm all it. There's so much to tell y'all about. Uh, you have the three sections. You have basketballs, hats, and pictures. There was a fourth section, individual autographs. So on the picture, to your right, my left, where I'm with Brandon Boston, the guy in the uniform, the future of the league, uh, there's a tables and chairs set up over there. Certain players had stacks of like individual items they had to go sign, whether it be shoes, hats, more basketballs, more pictures, jerseys. So some of the player, most of the players, the bigger name players would have stuff over there. But my guy number 12, he was just like, oh, no, nah, I ain't going to have nothing over there. I said, man, you keep your head up, man. You just getting started. Like, you're going to have some stuff, man. Uh, and uh, it was another player, Coffee, Amir Coffee. He was also trying to act like he wasn't going to have anything. I was like, man, if you have a big game, last season, I remember he came in, players were hurt, and so they, like, started him for a game, and he went crazy. He had, like, over 30 points. He might have done, like, 41 points. I don't I think 41 was the number. But he had a game like that. And so after the game... Fans were coming to our section where we're posted up in the arena and asking us questions. Do you have any coffee gear, like in Amir coffee jerseys and stuff? And we nobody expected him to go off like that. But, I mean, he's on the team. Nobody gets to see these guys practice. So we don't know. Coach Tyron Lue would not put him out there for no reason or not start him for no reason. But that man started for a couple games, and he was going crazy for a nice little spurt in the season. And... I was just saying to him, I was like, hey, man, if you have any games like you did last season, they're going to have stacks for you soon enough. And so we, we like, laughed a little bit about that and all. It was cool chatting with him because him and Zubak were over there together signing stuff. So they were having conversation, and then they were joking on each other, and they were including us in their conversations, and it was cool. Like, we would laugh at a joke, and, hey, don't laugh at that. And it's like, hey, it was funny. I had to. I know funny. Kinda. If you didn't know, I used to do a little stand-up back in my day. I know a little funny. So, yeah, like, just the interactions like that, that was dope. But, uh, I'm listening, I'm giving y'all four stories. Uh, three and four right here. Brandon Boston, to, I was already a fan of him, just like as a player, his game is cool, he gets buckets, but... Chatting with him was really dope. While we, I was chatting with him, though, I could feel an energy from him that, like, he has a very bright future just off of his teammates' energies that were being, like, sent his way. He's over here signing the hats with me. We're having a little conversation. He talks like a, a young folk, like a young cat, though. He No cap. Uh, what's the other? I forgot the other slang, but he, I would say something. He'd be like, huh, no cap. And I don't say that. I don't say no cap. It's, I feel like I'm a bit too old to be saying that. And this guy, what is he, 20 years old, 21 years old, maybe 22? I don't know. Youngin. Look at how tall he is. 6'7". But he was saying no cap and stuff. And to me, I was like, whatever. Kids these days. Am I right? <laughs> um, yeah. But anyways... You could feel an energy. Terrence Mann came over to him to check up on him. Reggie Jackson was yelling across the room. Reggie Jackson had a lot of energy. I didn't get to interact with him. I had to step away and go help with some other stuff while he came to sign things. But Reggie Jackson carried the energy. I respect it. I loved it. He was having a good day. And, like, he brightened the room. But everything Reggie was doing, where Brandon at? Hey, where Brandon at? And he was just yelling for Brandon. Like, he wanted Brandon to be included everything so like it made me feel oh Brandon I mean they play the same position he's got to see something also NBA legend Jerry West the logo the NBA logo he was there he pulled up and he gave Brandon Boston a signed book I guess he has his own book out <laughs> I shouldn't be saying I guess I'm pretty sure he has his own book out and I probably should read it at some point but who knows if I do I will maybe who knows but he uh, stopped Brandon to give him the book. He wanted to give it to him specifically. He wasn't giving out to everybody on the team. He gave it to him to where Brandon was like, a word, and took it back into the locker room. 
then came back out to sign more stuff. It was cool to see. And then uh, Terrence Mann that came over. So to like see these energies going towards this Brandon Boston cat, I was like, okay, yeah, he's got to be. Paul George, like everybody was showing him love. It was cool. I was like, dang, like they really, they really like this kid. I already was a fan, but like our little interactions, our conversations and such down to earth. He loves the game. He loves everything he's got going for him. Like, he's living life. I'm a big fan. But this last story, I'm breaking 30 minutes. I'm going to keep this, like, try to do, like, five minutes maybe. John Wall. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Uh, John Wall. Man, he's a DC legend. I know all my Wizards fans back home love John Wall. I love John Wall. I'm telling you, like, when John Wall was a wizard, I was going to games to watch him play. I would go to watch the other teams, but I knew John Wall was there, so I'm there too. I had John Wall's shoes. And remember his Reeboks? Like, the zigzags? I wanted to joke with John Wall. I wanted to tell him I had a pair of those, and those were, like, the worst pairs of basketball shoes that I've ever worn in my life. I tried to hoop in them. They were terrible. I knew I had to play a certain way with them. I could only go straight. So I felt like these were made for John Wall because you know how fast he is. He just runs the fast break, gets the rebound, and runs. So when I play in them, I do more side-to-side movement. I'm not that fast, so I never, like, tried to race you down the court. I'm going – I'll zigzag my way down there. But his shoes, to me, were the worst shoes I've ever hooped in in my life. But I would try to hoop in them. They look cool. I found my colorway. I used to wear them. I didn't even, I don't, I, back then I used to try to wear basketball shoes to school, but I think those ones I was like, nah, these are just specifically for the court for John Wall. So like John Wall is a big deal. And the fact that the Clippers got John Wall, I was so hype off of that. So my whole thing going into season two with the Clippers after signing him this off season, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to become friends with John Wall. Some way, somehow, I got to figure it out to interact with John Wall because that's my dog. I need to be friends. So anyways, I knew today was the day. And he came out late. So John is tight, man. Everything he does to me is he can't be no cooler than what he is. He came out kind of later than most of the players. Um, he scoped the room. He was just in like, like he just finished working out maybe. So he was in like Under Armour type stuff. Or he was in the locker room halfway dressed. I don't know. But he came out, scoped the room, said what's up to a few people, then went back in. Then he came back out in uniform, and he did his whole media tour and stuff. But to see him, like, when he walked through the room, I don't know. I was I was fanboying out. But I was like, hold it down. Like, be cool about this whole thing because, you know, I'm going to get a chance to chat with him. Be cool about this shit. So I'm trying to keep my cool. I'm over here. You know, standing in the corner, wait till he comes sign these hats. I'm going to help him with the hat. It's going to be simple. But, like, watch him walk around. This man, like, he had a glow to him. It was like, that's that guy. Paul George had that glow to him, too. But Paul George was more down to earth because he had his daughters with him. And, like, his, I guess, I'm assuming, like, one of his very close friends uh, who was, like, kind of watching the daughters while he was doing everything. And... Every time Paul George was doing anything, he'll pop out and be like, he'll check on the daughter. So he'll ask his homie, are y'all good? Do y'all need anything? So it felt like Paul George was another person to the room, even though it's Paul George. Trust me, I love Paul George. He's a beast and all that. But like, it was more down to earth a version of Paul George because he had his family there. So he was like, you know, doing family things. He was doing this, he was business, but he had family. So it was like, oh yeah, your kids over there, they you good. There was one time I had to help him get his homie. I was like, he was trying to get his homie's attention. The homie wasn't paying attention. So he was signing stuff. And I was like, hey, Paul wants you. And so he called him from across the room, this type of stuff. So I was the middle man of that. So that was cool. But it felt like Paul was more down to earth. Paul came over and said, what's up, all that. But when John Wall was walking through the room, it was more like all eyes were on him, cameras flashing. And not many cameras were allowed inside. But the cameras that were there were like, on him type of thing so it was cool but John Wall came over he did his stuff so out of order he would sign some stuff leave go do other things come back sign some more stuff but then he finished 
all this media stuff, went in the locker room, changed, came back out to sign. And by then, it was kind of shutting down. People were, like, done with the media, but John knew he had to finish his stuff. So we're still over there on duty, holding it down on the hats and the balls and the pictures and such. And he came over, and I told two of my coworkers, I was like, hey, if you get a chance to see, if you see me and John talking, please snap some pictures. Please, this is all I need. I want to put this shit, I want to frame this, all that. And... Neither of them did. My homie, he said he he peeped it too late. Yeah, had, we had too much going on elsewhere. We were trying to like clean up shop too, because by after a point we wanted to get out of there at a good time. So we was cleaning up. But John Wall came, and I'm chatting with him. So I just pretty much went and said, "Yo, man, I'm from Virginia. We love you back in D.C." And he was like, "Oh, word." He was, so he was like, "Man, I miss it out there. Man, I miss the city." He was like, you know, unfortunately, things didn't work out, but I miss it out there. He was like, my brother Brad out there, man. And I'm not going to say what he said about Brad, Bradley Beal, because I feel like that could get me in trouble. What he said, he, like, literally told me some things, and I was like, whoa, okay, that's, that's cool to hear, like, inside scoop type of deal, but I'm not going to say because I, huh. Pretty much, though, John was just on some, that's my brother, man. Um, unfortunate things didn't work out. And I was like, yeah, like, it sucks. Uh, they got a, they got some pickups. We were talking about their additions to the team. And he said somebody on that team, he was like, yeah, nah, that dude sucks. And I said, huh? You be talking like that? Because I be saying stuff like that, too, about other players. I be saying they suck. But he said so-and-so sucks. I ain't going to say who. But he was like, he sucks. So John said he sucks, man. Hey, he sucks. That's what he said, and I believe what he said, so he sucks. That's that. But conversation, man. Then he started asking me, how long you been in L.A.? I said, what, me? You asking me? So I told him, man, six and a half years, but this is my second season with the team. And I told him, I was like, when I, when I heard the Clippers assigned you, I was so hyped coming into this season, man. Because you know, like, already from back then, just been a fan for so long. And he was like, oh, that's love, man. He was like, yeah. He was like, me and Paul, man, we've been trying to work on this, but things, uh, he was like, this was in the works for a couple years, man. He was like, it just didn't work out at first because uh, he had his contract with the Rockets and such, so he eventually had that buyout. So he was able to be free, and then the Clippers could sign him. But just that whole conversation, he was like, yeah, me and PG been talking about that for a while, man. And it should have happened sooner, but you know, it, it it but it all worked out. And just like his, the way he carries himself, down to earth, chill. And to have this conversation, man, it was so cool. It felt like at first though, I was nervous when I was my first words. I was like, <clears throat> I'm from Virginia. Like, I said it not like that, but it just felt it was coming out that way. Like I was, you know, choking at the worst time. But I after it got across that part. Conversation ran smooth. Now I feel like I was chatting with him. I'm chatting with y'all. It was cool. And, like, I was helping him at that point with the pictures and the hats and stuff. And, like, it was so dead everywhere else to where it was just us at a point. And at the end of it all, he dapped me up and it was like, nice meeting you. And I was like, what? I'm supposed to say that. It was nice meeting you, John. Wall star. I I'm excited, man. That team, that Clippers team, they got a squad. And it... It was blowing my mind, though, how every player would come. I forgot, like, I mean, it's football season right now, so I ain't thinking that much about basketball. Media day, cool and all. They start preseason in a couple weeks, but, like, it's football season, so I ain't thinking too much about basketball. But as these players are coming out the locker room, I'm mad I miss Luke Kennard. Luke Kennard is one of my favorite players. <clears throat> uh, I'm the biggest Luke Kennard fan probably out there one of the biggest and I wanted to get to like chat with him meet with him but I, I had to step out to go help some other stuff and when I did that of course Luke went and Kawhi and stuff so like I missed certain players but even though that was happening I was still seeing these players come out the locker rooms and I'm like yo this squad is crazy who's gonna who's gonna start I don't know this squad is kind of extreme a lot of these players would be starters on different teams. Like, I'm like, yo, 
this team, they're gonna make a run, man. Me and the coworker, with me and the homie JP, shout out JP. We was talking. We said worst case scenario, five seed. Worst case, that's like if you fools choose to lose, cause like if they rotate, they want to rest players. The players coming off the bench are still good enough to start on most teams, and it's just like, man, this squad is crazy. Oh, quick story, side story. This is just for like a positive. Let's end on a positive, positive note. John Wall chatting with him was dope. Uh, didn't get to see some players, so that kind of went downhill. But this one. My man, Robert Covington. So Robert Covington and one of my managers know each other from the G League. Back then it was the D League. They changed the name. So 10 years, 10 years ago when Covington was in the league, he was playing in the D League. And my manager was working for the D League team. So they knew each other then. And then years later, well, now when he gets signed last season, he got traded to the Clippers. They reconnected. He remembers her. And they go, just to go way back 10 years. So the, when it goes to like this whole networking idea in the sports world, if any of y'all work in sports, I mean, this is probably everywhere else as well. But I mean, I'm deep in the sports world kind of. And I have come across folks at different places. There's a coworker for the Clippers. When I was getting interviewed, I interviewed with this certain department who I used to work with back at Fox Sports. And so like that whole thing was crazy. But my manager knew Robert Covington 10 years ago for a D-League team. And now, look, they're both working with the Clippers, for the Clippers, playing for the Clippers. And so now they're cool. Like, it's just the relationships. And it's always good, man, to try to leave on a positive note with whoever you interact with because you never know what's going to come from it in the future. And, shoot, that's, that's some advice. If you are working wherever you're working, man, you better put a smile on in your workplace. You better put that game face on, get it together. Because someone who might be working alongside you might be your employer someday. They always talk about that and say that. And I'd be like, yeah, whatever, not for me. It ain't going to happen like that for me. But I'm seeing it happen in person. And another, damn, there's so much to tell y'all. Another coworker from Fox Sports, I was working with one of my work gigs and for Bally Sports and I look up on the TV and my coworker from Fox Sports now works in Chicago but he is on TV for Bally Sports just giving up his gambling he's telling his uh, picks for the week or whatever it's just like a gambling show a daily talk show or something and he zoomed in and did his video call and gave his picks and why he's going with those picks it's it's crazy, man. It's, it's so much. It was such a great experience. I was so hype off of it. I held you guys here. It's been over 42 minutes. If you stuck around this long, hats off to you. If you want to know more about certain stories or players, hit me up. I can tell you. I can go into more detail. It's just I have so much to tell y'all, and I don't want these episodes to be long. I promise. The original... Like, the, the main frame, the schedule of these episodes are supposed to be no longer than 25 minutes. But these past two episodes, I've had so much to say. The experiences, I, I mean, it's, it's hard to speak on it as great as the, situa as the uh, experiences were. Like, being there, <laughs> I have some pictures and stuff. I gave, I'm sharing with y'all some stuff from, like, outside of my view from third person but i have some first person view on my phone and such and i'll probably post some of it but man the experience i'm i'm looking forward to what's coming like it's the future has to be bright right and shoot that's that's gonna be it man i'm gonna leave it right there yeah moral of this whole story it done turned out to be uh Treat others how you want to be treated. Because, like, these players on the team, the way they were just interacting, now I want to root for these players to do well. My manager and the player, Robert Covington, that relationship, 10 years later, I forgot where she said they was at. 
I forgot the name of the team, the D-League team, but y'all could figure that out. Whatever team he played for, she was working there, and now she's with the Clippers, and just look at it, man. It all comes full circle, man. Treat others how you want to be treated. And what I want you guys to do, like, subscribe, retweet, comment. We are available on all platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, if you're on YouTube, please comment. Just say something. Just say, yo, what's up? Or say your favorite NBA team. Or your favorite Clippers player. I can tell you more. I'm telling you. I got stories. I spoke with most of them. I interacted with most of them. Kawhi, not this season. But I interacted with him last season in the tunnels for a good minute. He's the homie. I mean, he don't really know me. He probably don't remember. But still, like... Great experiences. Like, I could tell you more. I, I didn't get to dive in. I didn't want to give a whole player profile on each one. But I have a whole list. I wrote about the experiences and, like, what stood out to me, what I loved about them. Oh, like, they gave the rookie duties. The rookie, uh, Musa Diabate, he was going around asking everyone, what kind of snacks do you like? What kind of snacks? Because they were sending him to the store to get snacks for their plane because they flew to... Uh, they're flying to Vegas for camp or Seattle for preseason. One of the two. They're going to both of those places, I think. But, yeah, just to see all that stuff from the inside. It's real. Rookie duties. They was going to make him carry his bags and carry everyone else's bag. It's all cool, man. Hey, that's episode 50, the Player One Podcast. We got merch coming soon, uh, giveaways coming soon, interviews coming soon where I'm going to have sit-downs in person and such, setting up that whole situation excited man i appreciate y'all for being here appreciate y'all for sticking around that's it episode 50 the player one podcast yuck